and we are going live. Good morning. Good morning and welcome. Let me just open up the chat. Good to see you. We've got numbers popping in. Please let me know if you can hear me. So if you have not joined us here before, this is the weekly chat, which takes place every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Let me just... The chat has moved. Let me find it. There we go. Okay, it's just opening up. As you come in, please let me know you can hear me. And we'll check we've got uh, sound happening and everything working. I am Lynn from Cavi Central Guinea Pig Rescue. And we have such a lovely day today. I thought I would sit outside. But um, as you can hear, I'm sitting right beside the birds. <laughs> so give me one moment. I might actually let them out. Hold on. There we are. They're free flying. And my pet birds and uh, they're free flying which is great so welcome to Cavi Central uh, today we're going to talk about caging and this is a really big discussion with lots of things hi Marsha can you hear me okay uh, it's a really big discussion and a big big topic so there's lots to say on this but what I want to touch on is the caging that you can look at if you're going to consider getting guinea pigs or you are new to guinea pigs, or you in fact want to check your caging is adequate for guinea pigs. So there's lots of topics and uh, things we need to look at here. So I thought what I might do, oh, fantastic, excellent. So I thought where I would start is actually by showing you some typical caging. And as we go through, we'll look at the differences between them and why you would consider one over the other or not at all. <laughs> and uh, then you can evaluate your own situation. Firstly, um, with people who are considering getting guinea pigs as pets, the very first decision you need to think about is where you're going to keep them. Now this can vary for everyone depending on, the, depending on where you're located in the world. And it's really fascinating because in lots of forums, they will say you can only have this type or you must have this size. And the reality is that there are places in the world that need to accommodate guinea pigs in different ways. So, for example, if you were to consider the European countries that have snow every year, you would not be able to keep guinea pigs outdoors in any way because they simply are going to die. The, the weather temperature outside is far too cold. Here in Australia, um, we're in Sydney, we do have climates that can get very hot and quite cool, but it is possible to actually have them outdoors and live quite happily in caging outdoors. But there's a lot of exceptions have to be made around that for those hot weather days and you're constantly working with the temperature temperatures and so on. So there's lots to talk on with this. There's areas like Canberra that are three and a half, four hours from where we are here that get snowfall and again far too cold. Areas like um, the Blue Mountains and further west where again temperatures drop and they get very, very cold temperatures. Um, again, not safe to keep them in hutches outside. So let's talk, let's go through this and evaluate lots of different options because you need to consider this first before getting guinea pigs as pets. The second thing you need to consider is how many guinea pigs you're going to have because that really does put an emphasis on what sort of caging you need to look at. We've seen rescues in the past where we've had um, you know, a hutch of guinea pigs and there's been 12 guinea pigs jammed into that small space. It's just not right. Um, so there's, there's lots of considerations around that. Most people, when they want to have guinea pigs as pets, they will look at having two or a pair. 
So let us start. Let me go and um, bring up the chat. Hello, Fitz. Hi. Awesome. Yeah, we can talk about substrate as well if we have time. That's actually a big topic too, and there's so much to say on it. Um, but we've got about 40 minutes, so we'll see how much we can we can get done. Now, let me open this up. I've got a window here for you. Hi, Miranda. Hello. Okay. Let me see. I'm wondering if the light here is not really good or not. We'll see later. I literally thought I'd be outside today, so we'll see, <laughs> see how that goes. All right, I want to open up this one here. Let's get it on the screen. And you should now be seeing the very first image that we have. And this is what we call a C and C cage, and it stands for core flute and cubes. You'll notice the base of it is white. That is a white corrugated plastic that is known as core flute. Um, if you often ask for core flute, depending on where you are in the world, people may or may not understand you. But if you say a corrugated plastic, then you they, they will generally um, know what that is. Core flute is actually, actually something you can commonly obtain and art stores are very, they very frequently have it. So if you've got a hardware store, often they have it but art stores always have this and corrugated plastic comes in different thicknesses so all the way from one mil thickness through to five mil and there's actually a three mil which is the one you're looking at there which is fantastic it's quite rigid in its form and you score one side of it to make it then bend snap into a, a shape and you can form these uh, floored areas. Now the grids on the side, they're also supplied separately and you can purchase those from a number of different places. Or if you want to make it really easy, you can actually purchase from someone like Guinea Pigs Australia who support us and they have these cages available in kit form. So there's lots of ways to get them. But this is a CNC cage and it is designed to be indoors. Now, sadly, I've done rescues in the past where people have put these on balconies as outdoor cages. They are not outdoor cages. They offer no protection from the elements whatsoever. They are purely and simply for indoors. So let's take another, let's take a look at one of these. This is a wooden hutch and they come in all manner of shapes and sizes, which is something I'm going to touch on here today. Because if you are looking at keeping your guinea pigs outside, so you live in a climate that is quite relatively comfortable, but may have days of high temperatures as well as low where you're going to bring them inside, outdoor hutches like this can be quite useful. And they're made of wood. There's lots of uh, discussion around the substrate and how they would be lined and how we would actually recommend that so but this is an example of a wooden hutch now you don't typically see those inside but again I have seen scenarios where people have wanted to position their guinea pigs inside but they've chosen an internal garage and they have a wooden hutch in the garage so there's all sorts of combinations that we see in rescue where people are using these sorts of different situations but wooden caging for the for the most part, are designed to be outdoors. What I would say is that cages like this always need to be under an awning, close to the house, and absolutely fully protected, which are other steps you need to take. So let's move forward. Okay, this is another example of a wooden cage. And in fact, it's one I really don't recommend. Um, these are hutches which are designed again to be outside but due to the size and shape of them it becomes an interesting situation to pick up and hold your guinea pigs as well as lots of um, issues that can arise within a cage like that if you're not careful. Um, the outside area, the wired area is easily accessible 
for mice, for rats, as well as snakes. So it's not as secure as what a lot of people might think. So a cage like this really doesn't offer a great deal of protection and there needs to be a lot of work done to it to change that. But again, it's not one of the cages I would recommend. So let's move on. Okay, here is an even larger version of a wooden cage. And we do see these where people want to provide an outside cage for their guinea pigs. And they want to provide what is what they think is an extraordinary amount of space that they're giving their guinea pig room to move to roam without restricting them a great deal. They also are of the opinion that they'll move this cage from place to place so that they've got fresh grass underneath. But this presents all sorts of interesting discussions and uh, predominantly I feel that they create work for owners of these cages. They are often neglected, they are often left where they should be moved and attended to and even though the guinea pigs can go up into that wooden area we find that there's no care for them that's often long term being given to cages like this. They soon get neglected. They're often put down the back of yards away from the family areas, away from homes and in that respect people start to forget about their pet guinea pigs and we see this repeatedly in rescue where that's not the goal of having pets to begin with. So again, a cage like this for lots of reasons, I really don't recommend. I understand that people feel they're giving them a lot of room and a lot of space, but the reality is the workload with a cage like this and the location of it means that ultimately the guinea pigs will have trouble. Okay, a Midwest cage. This is very common in America more so than here in Australia, but the Midwest is an, a type of cage that you can purchase, which is in different sizes. It's very similar to the CNC cage in that it has a soft base structure to the bottom, solid, and it has a the wire edges, which uh, they literally clip together. And with a Midwest, they often have this section in between where they walk over into different sections of the cage. Now, they can have a lot of space with them, but what I'd like to, to um, point out firstly is that this is an indoor cage only. It is not an outside cage. So with a cage like this, very much the guinea pigs are exposed to the elements. And then we get the really creative cages where people want to make their own. And this is an example of a cage that has been made and they've got guinea pigs in it. But to me, it looks a bit, oh, it's a bit reminiscent, I suppose, of a fish tank size being on a platform and then on a level higher. Um, it is accessible from the top, which is great, but the guinea pigs literally only have one little hide down the end there to, to hide away into. And it, yeah, it doesn't resemble a cage that is, is ideal for guinea pigs. But again, people can often want to make their own cages. A reason for this is that they're fitting it into a space that's available to them. So we get often cages that are made for specific areas within their home. And because they're inside, that's fantastic. There's going to be more interaction with the pets. They're going to be picked up and held much more. But again, if the cage is not made in the right way with the right um, design around it, then this can lead to ultimately to problems. A few of the issues I see here are shavings in the cage and there's no lip edge around the base, which means that the shavings will soon fall out onto the carpet and that then becomes a problem and people start to to feel that uh, this is more a problem of the guinea pigs than it is the actual cage structure so again it's not the guinea pigs fault this is happening it's all about the cage design wow check this one out <laughs> this is an elaborate cnc cage 
and uh, the creators of this have gone to a lot of effort to create the different levels that you've got which you can do with the wired structure you can put them all together just one thing um with all the little bumps that you've got the little nodules that hold the cnc cages together i actually prefer to use cable ties um i moved away from those years ago and we do have a cnc cage here um yeah for our boys they're they're in the cnc which is the live stream that you've seen there's a very long live stream that you can watch them in but i prefer i prefer cable ties when i'm setting these up this is an elaborate cage structure and these guinea pigs look like there's lots of areas for them to go lots of hides they're very safe on all the levels they can move around easily um, the only difficulty that we'd be seeing with a cage like this is cleaning and access to those areas but because it looks very modular in its form it really would be easy to get used to to actually clean and maintain you can see it's also designed in a way to fit the corner of that room so you know that's fantastic <coughs> excuse me okay here we have another um, cage which has been built home-based cage very modular again very similar to the cnc in that it's got levels but you'll notice the use of perspex rather than the um, wireframe edge which keeps the guinea pigs contained within that space until they want them able to come outside and roam. Looks like they've got a little door there right in the corner over here and uh, they can actually come outside with that which is rather rather sweet. Okay, another CNC cage and this one is designed to go on a table so it's off the ground it's at waist height which is more accessible for adults definitely and it keeps them safe and secure again they've got the metal edges all the way in they've got ramps up to the top level and back down and uh, that's a sweet looking little cage again only for indoors okay it's when cages like this start appearing on groups that people become upset in saying that there's no space in a cage like this. It's far too tiny. And often people are offended and upset to hear this because they feel that it looks very neat and tidy. There's a drinking area, there's some food and some hay. But the reality is it is too small. Now, when we need to talk about cage sizes and i'm going to come back to this there are a lot of considerations that you need to make and if this were a guinea pig that were traveling for example and they're moving from place to place we have people who travel in caravans for example and they're going on a three-week holiday they take their guinea pigs with them this could be the transport cage and they could live in this but during the day, they would then go out to a pen on grass and have grass time while they're supervised. So this is the sort of combination where they can have space, but they can also have a safe, protected area when they need to. But in terms of permanent living inside only forever, this is far too small. So we'll come back to sizes shortly. Okay, another cage, which is an outdoor cage. Again, it's made of wood very similar to the two story that you saw except there's three levels and the issue here again needs to be made predator proof you see these sorts of photos and they're outside with the sun shining with lovely grass the reality is in places like sydney they get so hot so we have a video which is um i think it's called hot temperatures or how hot does it get and it was a very hot summer's day here. We were in the 40s and I went and measured. I actually put a cage out and staged it so that we could actually measure the temperatures. And I'd like you to look at that if you can because it really does bring some light to what these animals go through. And in cages like this that are outside in full sun, they will perish. There's no question. The A-frame cage, okay. This is a newer version of what we call an A-frame cage. And 
as far as permanent housing for guinea pigs goes, we don't we don't recommend this at all, and it really is uh, it can cause death. Um, these sorts of cages go directly onto the ground, and because they're made of a wood substrate, and even there are other cages like the igloo, which is a different version that goes straight onto the ground. They are prone to all the water and rain that gets on the ground. So in this instance, over time, the wood starts to deteriorate, to get damp. And of course, that becomes an absolute haven for fungal and for mites. The guinea pigs, people often think, oh, but there's a little wooden end that they can go to and they can hide in here. That little end really does not provide any protection because they've still got to eat and they've got to come out into the wet area to do that. They often get wet tummies, wet arms, wet paws. They go back and then their interior is as wet before long as the exterior. And yeah, simply over time, they don't work. What we do recommend these cages for is grass time. They're a great way to have guinea pigs in a secure location on grass for a set period of time, not to live in permanently, but to be out there for a few hours. So please don't ever put them in there permanently. Woo, we wish, what did I do then? Magic through it, didn't I? Hold on, let me go back to here. I've shot through all of them, there we go. Okay, the A-frame. All right, metal cages are an absolute no on all accounts. When I first started rescue 20 years ago, these are the cages that were commonly seen. And these cages, while they make people feel they are secure from predators because they're literally a metal box, they're so dangerous for guinea pigs and they're an absolute death trap. Firstly, they've got a wire bottom, which is not good for their little feet. We had in the past so many guinea pigs that would come in with broken feet, bumblefoot, severe injuries because cages like this, when it came time to relocate them, people would just drag them and of course their little feet would get caught. The other issue is they're constantly walking on wire and guinea pigs don't have furred feet. So this does cause eventual problems with feet severe as bumblefoot, which is, it's absolutely hideous. Um, the other issue is that they're made of metal, so they heat up and they're very um, conductible to the elements. So if you're, you're in cold weather, again, they'll get very cold. So cages like this, animals overheating, there's limited protection. They seriously don't, don't survive. Sadly, I've seen a few more of these start to reappear just in the last few months. These are never acceptable. They're not, not to be used and uh, yeah. We don't want to support them. Okay, this sort of a cage comes up comes up from time to time in the forums and the groups. And even with guinea pigs in it, we see all sorts of images. The reality here is that this is a ferret or a bird cage. This is not a guinea pig cage. Guinea pigs are animals that like to be on one level, that like a good amount of space on one level. They often, when we look at CNC cages where they can go up to a little ramp area, the area doesn't offer so much more space, but a little bit more. But in a cage like this, there's no protection for them to fall from any of the, the different levels. It's too um, accident prone would be a good word for it. And down the bottom, of course, the metal, metal wire flooring. We recently had two guinea pigs come in in this situation i think i shared the post on our facebook group but they were living in a cage like this which was really really awful so yeah please know that cages like this are not acceptable for guinea pigs they are more suited to ferrets or to birds plastic based cages this is one on rollers this is again an indoor cage only and I have seen numerous times where people have used these as outside cages thinking they're perfectly okay. And we'll have the guinea pigs live in them in winter on the balcony. They're not okay. The ambient air temperature 
through the wire remains the same. So there's no protection for guinea pigs whatsoever. They also have a very small cage space within them, even though it looks big because it's got this big, wide, top, tall area. The base area is relatively small. So guinea pigs in cages like this, if you've got baby guinea pigs and this is a starter cage to have them in, that would be perfectly fine. But as they mature and get older, you might then move to something like a CNC where you can provide them with more space. Okay. Sadly, cages like this are being advertised as suitable for guinea pigs. They are not. And the reason is predominantly the maintenance of them. Now, they look secure, but you'll find that certainly here in Australia, rats can dig to get into a cage like this. They'll happily tunnel through and under and into a cage like that as well as foxes and dogs and other predators. So they're not safe. But the other issue is that of cleaning and housing. People see them again on this lovely grass area. But in reality, after a couple of days, the guinea pigs that are in there will have eaten that grass level down the bottom. And then they've either got to move the cage to get it onto a fresh area, or they've got to do something else within that structure as well as the ups, upstairs area. So it would be great as a chicken coop, but I would never recommend this for guinea pigs. This is another indoor cage, which has been purpose built quite creatively. It looks lovely in there. You've got guinea pigs with lots of space. They've got two levels and they're two separate levels. So these guinea pigs, I don't think are joined or is that Maybe that's a tunnel, a, uh, I'm not sure if that's a ramp at the back. I don't think so. But again, they've got two levels in there. They can see the guinea pigs through the perspex. The only issue I would look at with a cage like this is in fact the perspex. We've had guinea pigs come in in the past that have had serious fungal issues and it's often because of lack of ventilation in and around caging. One of the reasons for this is actually the solid sides. Now, in this instance, it may actually be okay because they're relatively short in height, but I've seen guinea pigs kept in, for example, plastic container boxes. And the sides of that, even though people say they're, they're cleaning them out every day and they're putting fresh hay in there, the condensation and the moisture in and around those solid walls and the lack of ventilation soon encourages fungal and guinea pigs do not do well in situations without good ventilation. What do you think of this one? I think it would be a nightmare to try and pick up and hold your pet. So they actually again describe this as an outdoor guinea pig cage for guinea pigs, rabbits and other animals. But honestly, I would see it more as a cat run myself. Um, and I know a lot of cat, cat owners would be offended at that. But in reality, there's a hutch down one end. The guinea pigs can come out into these metal, metal areas, which look like a really long section that they can go through. Can you ever imagine trying to pick up and, and hold your pet guinea pig in something like this? It would be very difficult to do so as well as all the issues of it being on the ground, exposed to the water when it rains. It looks lovely in the sun with grass, but when they've eaten the grass, when it's raining and pouring and it's night time, the problems are numerous. Again, it's metal, so many problems, not for guinea pigs. Okay, here we have another version of the ferret cage. Now this one again is made to look a bit more like a cage that could be used for guinea pigs. Honestly, it looks more like a chinchilla cage. Um, it is much more secure than the first version of the bird cage that we saw. But again, every single ramp that they've got to get up and down, they're going to have issues with that. And at some point, there will be a guinea pig that trips or falls. There will be an issue. Picking up your guinea pig in this area, again, quite tricky to do so. And interaction with your pet is something you have to consider because in order for these pets to be really calm and 
for you to have a relationship with them. You don't ever want to chase them. So a cage like this encourages you to, to chase them. It looks more like a chinchilla cage. A rat cage would be suitable, a ferret cage, but again, not for guinea pigs. Okay, <laughs> here again is another interesting cage for a guinea pig that someone felt was suitable. And they have used part of their TV cabinet to have their pets in. Um, totally unsuitable. Sadly, they're trying to make the guinea pigs fit into what space they have indoors. But the reality is this is an animal in a little box that does not have enough ventilation that has layered levels rather than a flat horizontal space on which to roam. Um, it would be really unfortunate for any guinea pig to live in there. Can you imagine the noise level as well? <laughs> like, yeah, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do you think of this one? The Taj Mahal. This was created for guinea pigs and you know, I admire the level of woodwork and creativity that has gone into it. But quite honestly, the manageability of it, I think long term would be an issue. So again, guinea pigs can be in there and move around on different levels, but it's a bit like a maze. And I feel it's more suited to rats or ferrets in this instance. Ferrets, I think, would be up and out. Um, but certainly rats would be yeah, more inclined to make use of those little weaving patterns and in and out. Cleaning it could be an absolute nightmare, which presents more issues long term, because where there's work concerned with cage care, there's less enjoyment with the pets, which is why you wanted to get them to begin with anyway. So you need to consider the caging so it can be kept really well, easily, and the predominant amount of time you spend with them is in enjoyment and handling interaction. These are available and they have a use which is uh, which is really good. Um, they, they're a portable cage which is foldable. So they're made of plastic base. You've seen me with um, We've done live streams where we've put the little ones out of their big cage into it so you can watch and follow the little ones that were um, uh, surrendered about two months ago, the family of 12. And these are fold out. You can set them up really quickly. Guinea pigs can have some contained floor time or space. You can interact with them there. They're fantastic. But the idea is you put them back in their cage, their actual cage. I have had numerous times where people have used these as housing, permanent housing for guinea pigs, and it doesn't work. The plastic that is in and around them and the lack of ventilation always leads to fungal. And the way we generally find out about people using these cages is that they come to us with these fungal issues and we say, what's your caging? And they say, it's this. So um, they simply don't work as a long-term solution for caging, but they are a way to have a time with them in a different area. For example, you can bring them into a living space, have guinea pigs there, have this, put them in there while you're cleaning their other cage. So it's a temporary house, which is really fantastic. Okay. Whoop, here we go. Just coming back to the screen which I hope is working. Let's see. Okay. All right. Did that show up for everyone okay? Hi, I thought it was funny. Hello, welcome to another mod. Hello. Thank you to the moderators, Marsha, and I thought it was funny you're here today. Hopefully they all showed up and it worked okay as we went through them and we were able to talk about them. I'm just going to go over to the chat and see what was going on there because it was quite a bit to, to get through and I've talked for quite a bit. Let's see what you've been chatting about. 
welcome, welcome, lots of people around the world. Okay, we've got a question for Puppy Pad. Let's have a look at this. Let's have a look at this one first. So, Fitz, what's my opinion on puppy pee pads? Okay, my opinion is they're bad for the environment. I really don't like the plastic going into the environment. So use paper. That's my opinion. Um, a lot of people through convenience want to put them um, down the bottom of cages. Um, quite often underneath whatever is above that, whether that's fleece or bubble mats or anything else. Um, but my opinion is to use paper or use cloth um, in a different way, simply for the environmental impact. If you're using these pee pads every day, the plastic is going into the environment. And uh, yeah, that's I just don't like it for that reason. Right. Hello, Janet Mary. Hi, Miranda. Okay, ramps. There was one picture in there. Would the ramp be too steep the way it was pictured in the last CNC cage? Yes, that one was very, very high. And uh, if I just get that up onto the screen so everyone can see it, I also thought the same, which is... Uh, Here we go. This one here. Let me just um, share the screen and you can see it all again. Okay, it was this screen here. Those ramps are in fact very steep for guinea pigs and a lot of cages sadly are like that but the ramps here are positioned into the top level um, what you can do is actually put something to elevate the ramp at the bottom so it actually extends the length of it but keeps it higher so something about four inches high like a block or a, a, another slope you can actually elevate them a bit more and the the length of the way that that run is is works a bit better so you can change that and modify. It's a bit steep. The sides on the cage are real on the uh, ramps are really important because numerous times we have guinea pigs. We had one in um, not this weekend, but last weekend, and uh, the guinea pig had fallen. So guinea pigs have accidents. They they do have trouble. So yes, a little bit too steep. So I thought it was funny. I like the CNC cages the best. Mine live in my room with me. That's awesome. Um, that is, it's a really good thing to consider because guinea pig urine and poo does not smell. What smells is lack of cleaning. If you're not cleaning the cages, the ammonia buildup is what is really nasty. So the cleaning process is really important. And depending on what you're using within every cage, the cleaning time frame differs. So if you're using shavings in a cage, you can have that cage cleaned up out to a week. If you've got them inside with shavings, which is not so common because the shavings will go on your carpet and floor, um, again, you would change it more frequently because of the smell or you would do patch cleaning, local cleaning. If you're using um, fleece, bubble mats, all these uh, soft cloth layers, you need to change them every two days. And I'd recommend that you put vinegar into your wash with anything that you wash them with because it cuts through any of that ammonia smell that might be building up. Yeah, the advantage with CNCs and indoor caging is also that they are um, accessible. You know, the whole reason we get guinea pigs is to enjoy them and to, you know, be involved with them. But if you choose a cage that is going to be out the back of your house, way down the back, and you have to say every day to the kids, okay, time to go feed the guinea pigs, um, it's very easy to forget about animals like that. And these animals, you know, we, we struggle with rescues that we do where, where this has happened and they've been left and yeah, all sorts of things do go wrong. In saying that, 
not all people are the same. And I do have people who have adopted that have had guinea pigs living in wooden cages, fully undercover, fully near their house, well protected. And these animals are living fantastically long lives. So it really comes down to the amount of commitment and care that the owner is going to have. And that ownership is always with the parent, not with children. Quite often people will say to me, I want my child to be responsible. So we're going to get guinea pigs. We think it's a good learning exercise to be responsible. No, because when they fail, the repercussions of that are enormous. Everything should be overseen by the adult, adult supervision, and it should be absolutely ensured that it's taken care of. So you can teach by example how to do things, not leave it to children. Okay, let's whiz back down that chat. Oh, Fitz, you know, I thought it was funny. Okay. Excellent. Fitz, do you have a channel? If you do, let me know what your channel is. I'll come check it out later. Okay, so Fitz is saying, oh, sorry, whoops. Whoops. Okay. Fitz is saying, when I got my, my baby guinea pigs at two weeks old, I was naive and I kept, I kept them in a rabbit cage that was five foot square, which I thought was big enough, but then realized fast. I think the rest might be in the next comment. Realized fast. Let's see. Realized fast. To find your next comment, Fitz, that it was way too small. And it was way too small. Okay, let's talk about cage size. <laughs> really, really important. Um, you're always going to get people saying that guinea pigs need a lot of room. The cages are too small. They need more room. The problem is they are a prey-based animal. And being a prey-based animal, their natural inclination is to be frightened to be fearful. So what do they do? They run and hide. So if you are new to guinea pigs and you've, you've got two new guinea pigs and they're new to you, they're going to be frightened. So if you give them the equivalent of a really big, enormous cage, which is fantastic and you think you've gone and got the very best for them, they're going to be terrified <laughs> and it's a bit like sitting in the middle of a football field and not knowing where they're going to go. So we have to provide adequate caging, which is associated with the stage that you are at and that they are at. We gauge it firstly by them and then by you. So for example, people may want to adopt guinea pigs that are older, but they've never had guinea pigs before. They're adult guinea pigs, for example, they should not go and give them a smaller cage. Oh, give me a moment. Sort these birds out. What's going on? Stop that. Here we go. Woo! Back again. Um, so with the sizes of cages, we need to stage it accordingly with what you have. If you have baby, baby guinea pigs, don't go giving them an enormous space. You want to give them a smaller area so that they can feel comfortable and safe within that. And then you can grow that space as they start to settle in. So yes, you do need to give guinea pigs space, but it needs to be appropriate. Another example, guinea pig that is sick or unwell or has an injury. If they've got to walk four foot to get their food or their hay, that's not going to help them. So that's where we use here in rescue hospital cages because we want them to rest. We want them to, to take it easy because they are really recovering and their recovery is much faster if we do that. It's dependent on what their issue is. But again, you have to stage things according to 
the animal needs. Um, yeah, so <laughs> we often have, yeah, please go and have a look at the lives, you know, the live videos on Sundays because they're really fascinating with uh, different guineas and different things we recommend and people can say, oh, if we did it this way, we would have a different outcome to where we are right now. So they're very helpful for you. Yeah, so we've got the right comments going on. So one's a ferret cage, definitely not for guinea pigs. <laughs> Some that's a TV stand, that's right, yep. Yeah, yeah, sadly, there were guinea pigs in that. Yep, yep. There's, uh, and, you know, these are the ones I've shown you here. These are just random photos that I have taken, you know, a lot of them just randomly off the internet so we can discuss them. But if you watch some of the videos that we've had with rescues, you'll really see horrendous caging. And there's so much more that I can cover on this in terms of what we do see. You know, council clear out where cages are put out beside the road. Um, I often, I, I, I'm in horror and I think, you know, poor animal that lived in that because that's why the cage has been put out. The animal died. Really awful. So we do see a lot. Oh, there was a bot on there. So thank you mods for dealing with that. It's our first bot for the day. Yeah, I thought it was funny. Good point. I totally agree. Um, I actually don't like cages with ramps. I see a lot of injuries with um, cages where they've got um, guinea pigs using ramps. So, um, yeah, it's not one of my preferences. I do prefer a flat leveled cage. They are horizontal. Um, they're animals that like a horizontal space. They like room on the ground. So whether that's, you know, on a table is almost ideal because it's waist height accessible but it's flat designed for them a very big cage space so yeah i rather like that too again it depends on where people are living you know there are people who um and i i don't get it myself i see this in the forums a lot where someone will come in they've joined a forum or a group and they they put up a picture of their guinea pig and there's always the absolute soldiers in there that will hammer them and say, that's completely incorrect. How dare you? It's really wrong. It's too small. Everything's wrong with it. Bum, 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 bum. And they achieve nothing because at the end of the day, they've come in there for help. So it's a bit like doing rescue. A lot of the rescues that we do do, we have to have diplomacy because it's the only way we can truly help them to help animals and it's heartbreaking like there's 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 really you know there's heartbreaking aspects to this but there are also other things you may not find out unless you ask questions so for example someone may have a very small cage that they've got a guinea pig or two guinea pigs living in and you may then find out that they actually roam around a massive room during the day until the owners go to bed. So they actually have a very large space. This is simply temporary housing at night. And I've had instances like that. Um, yeah, lots of combinations. Guinea pigs, when they do have floor time, they do have areas to roam, they get tired. Um, when we give them grass time here, bring them back into their fresh bedded houses, you'll see them actually collapse and just chill and they love to come back and relax, which is fantastic. They do. So there's different combinations depending on how people are living. People in units have different um, environments and demands on them than if you're in a house where you have a backyard space. So yeah, lots of considerations there and we have to work around what is the best. Does that mean people should never have pets? Let's have a I often see that people will say you should never ever have a pet and the reality is that pet is being loved they're being held all the time while people are in the house 
they're their comfort pet, they're with them the whole time. So it's it's really fascinating how people can can get so angry by one picture without really seeing the whole picture. And certainly, you know, some of those animals are very happy, very happy. So every situation is different, but we do have ground rules we need to work within. Yeah. So I thought it was funny, CNC cage, clean my cage every day, spot cleaning every day and a full clean once a week. That's not awesome. Well done. Well done. That's the way to do it. <laughs> Marsha, you swore what's going on. <laughs> okay, so we've got uh, Jojo. Kim Hart and my girls use a TV bench to stake pour their stack, their pour, pour enclosure. The runner behind is called the poop alley and they spend quite a lot of time in the back of there. I'm not quite sure what you mean there, but I think you're saying that you've got a cage which is situated on a TV bench, so on top. So again, that horizontal space could be really good. Every cage is different. Every purpose-built cage is different. Um, and it's it's also why we encourage people to reach out and hop into the group, which is the Cavi Savvy community. Because if you're finding you're getting repeat infections, like repeat fungal or repeat uh, urinary tract infection, often it's attributed to the caging. And we can simply look at it and go, ah, if you, if you change this aspect here, it will fix the problem. And uh, nine times out of ten, it's very helpful. There we go. I thought it was funny. She spends 95% around her piggies. Me too. <laughs> so, yeah, there are many people that do that. They're always with them. They're always near them. Um, yeah, within earshot of them, absolutely. So... Yeah, but I have many piggies here, as you know. Ah, oh, so Jojo says, no, it's actually Kim. Kim Harden. Wow. I want a piggy or a rabbit, but my mum says no. Maybe you should get your mum to have a look at this live and take a look because... A lot of people who traditionally think of guinea pigs like when I was a child, think of them as being outside in a hutch and uh, an animal that you don't want anywhere near the house. That was that was the thinking. But now we know far better. You know, for the last 20 years, we've been promoting them as inside pets. If they're kept clean, they don't smell. So sometimes people will say that um, they can smell boys a little bit more than girls and um, certainly when they're rumble strutting they do have a little scent that they can put in the air but it's temporary it's only at that moment it would be no different to the sense that we as people can create <laughs> which is not good <laughs> i can't believe i just said that okay so many parents whoops so many parents Get guinea pigs for their kids and put all the responsibility on the kids. Yeah, I touched on that before. Mm -mm. The responsibility is with the parent. They always need to have ownership of the household, the, the animals, everything within it. And, um, you know, we're slowly making inroads to changing that. A lot has changed in the 20 years I've been doing this. It really has. We don't see those metal wire cages as much. I've started, I just mentioned a little while ago, I've started to see a few around and I really want to stop that. But, you know, we completely eradicated that through letting people know their death traps, which they are. But um, in terms of accountability, what are you teaching your children? You know, the reasons for getting these pets are responsibility. This is what I hear. They want to teach them responsibility, commitment, how to look after something. So they want them to have all of this as well as learn to be gentle and kind. In a year's time, when they've overlocked 
overlooked things because the parents are not helping or reminding or saying, you know, let's go do this with the guinea pigs. Let's pick them up. What are you really teaching your, your children? You're actually teaching them disposability. And that's just not acceptable. These pets can live to be 10 years of age. And we, we get lots of them living to that age. So again, it comes back to what you're teaching them. We do hear often we want to surrender because we've got a dog now. <laughs> yeah, we actually hear that. We've got a dog now. We need to surrender. Um, really sad. Really, really sad. Um, as a rescue, we we um, have a lot of animals that are surrendered and we have a waiting list, which is longer than both arms. But I often wonder in teaching your children that you can replace one pet with another. When they get to be older, I wonder if, uh, you know, the children will think, oh, is it time for that retirement home yet? I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the chat. Yeah, yeah, that's a hard one. They've got another pet. Rabbits and guinea pigs have different needs in terms of caging. So we've got a bit of a chat about that happening. Rabbits can leap. So a CNC cage isn't going to keep them in. But in saying that, we had a house rabbit called Nibble, and a lot of you may remember Nibble, and actually Tiffin as well, because Tiffin joined him two years later. But um, Nibble and Tiff were both um, indoor rabbits. So we had an indoor CNC, which was a double story CNC cage that Nibble could go into there and just hop into. His chill and poo station was in there, but he had full free range of the house. So he was adorable, absolutely adorable. And Tiffin as well. Tiffin was a rescue. She was dumped and uh, she was, um, he was desexed, uh, desexed male. But um, yeah, she absolutely loved uh, Nibble and um, yeah, they became a bonded pair. So, you know, rabbits have different designs. We can use CNC cages with them, but they really do need to be done differently. Okay, we've got 42 Ollie. I have a two by three C and C for two boys. One is a baby and the other's around four months, still very young, but I'm about to up the grid size by one grid. Good. It is great to see that you are staging that because not a lot of people do that. And uh, that is excellent. So one's a baby, one's around four months. I'd actually keep it at that for a bit longer because four months is absolutely fine in a two by three Ollie. You could even wait to around seven or eight months with that. You could. Um, the importance there is that they're getting used to the cage space and you picking them up and that interaction and then giving them more when that is established will help them be more settled. Gabby Cavi is going to attempt to bond three males and four females. Hmm. Not really sure what you mean there. But what I would say to you is that we don't bond them. They have to like each other. So we don't bond guinea pigs. What, what we're really doing is saying that, you know, we're going to have this guinea pig meet this guinea pig and hope that they're going to like each other. But ultimately, it's all about the guinea pigs, not about what we want in that situation. There's a lot to cover on that. Hmm. <laughs> Jojo, her, her partner is often going down and feeding the piggies. Yeah. I think 
that's a sign of how healthy they are. That wee, wee, wee. <laughs> They're obviously liking that food. Yeah, some people do like to be mean to others. And uh, oh, look, um, it doesn't get you anywhere. It doesn't help them because they feel attacked. They, they, they then don't want to be there. So they're not learning anything. And the person doing it just sounds nasty. So I don't think there's anything to be gained by it. But, you know, look, I put myself out in social media all the time. And of course, there's mean comments. There's, there's all sorts of things. People will randomly say, you know, whatever, whatever they want to. At the end of the day, um, you know, whatever is motivating them to be mean and nasty is on them. So, and it applies. So our, our group that we have, the Cavi Savvy Guinea Pig community, it's a no bullying group. We won't tolerate it. Um, even if you're trying to say the right thing, but in a bullying, nasty way, comment removed because there's no need to be mean and nasty um yeah there's there's a lot that can go on and a lot of people are just naturally like it i don't get it i just yeah I, you don't get anywhere doing that you really don't and uh yeah no time for that i thought it was funny you're really chatty it's awesome i was giving guinea pigs as a gift rather Ah, rather they forced on me by a jealous ex. I tried to talk them out of it, but they were abusive. I kept the guinea pigs and learned to care for them. Well done. And you dumped the ex. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> Good choice. Yeah. The guinea pigs win. Excellent. Good choice. Jake. Hello, Jake. Where have you been? Hi there. <laughs> So Jake has uh, my three girls, 25.5 square foot, 2.37 square meters. I'm trying to think. That's fabulous. Yeah. Lots of places to hide if they want. Awesome. They would love that. Yeah. That's great. We were talking earlier, Jake, about staging because a cage like that, it looks fantastic. And people, you know, they idolize it. They think, wow, I'd love that. And that would be great. But the reality is not everyone can do that. People living in units can't do that. So, um, you know, they may not have the room to do that. And and where some people will be, be really nasty and say, oh, you should never have pets and this is wrong and that's wrong, they may not realise that they've actually got an allocated floor space arrangement as well as a smaller cage, cage for sleeping in. So there's, there's always balance in things that you can achieve. And, uh, yeah, I think it's great you've got that cage, Jake. It's awesome. Well done. Sorry, I'm trying to get into I think I've actually caught up on the chat. I think I have. Have I? Let me see. Yes, I have caught up on the chat. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I thought it was funny. I was saying that's why she's left some groups because of the nastiness in them. Yeah. And uh, look, honestly, there is no place on the internet that is without nasty people being there. So you'll often hear people say this group's nasty or that group's nasty. Um, it really comes down to how it's moderated and the time frame for that. So our group, which is the Cavi Savvy Guinea Pig Community. Hello, baby. Hi. Okay. Um, so our, our um, group, which is the Cavi Savvy Guinea Pig Community, is anti-bullying. We try to help people and give them the right advice in a way that is good for them to learn and give them options, show them different ways that is a better way to go. We will not allow material to go into that group which is against things that we represent. So if someone says, oh, this, you know, I, whatever it might be, there's so many posts get rejected going in there. We won't, we won't tolerate it. But at the same time, if there are nasty people making abusive comments that's also removed so um you know we try and keep on top of that and when i say within a time frame 
you need to remember a lot of these groups, wherever you are, whichever group you're in, people do sleep and they're away from that group. So while something might take off in the group as a bit of a hot point or a sore point, there may not be a moderator there at that moment in time. And, you know, it may be a couple of hours till one gets there, but then of course it's all blown up. So we have quite a few moderators in our group, which I think we're fairly covered for, but yeah, we we're always wanting to add to that. But yeah, just be mindful that the time frame can also play a part. And uh, sometimes, you know, threads can be firing away so quickly and the moderators can also be dealing with different comments, removing, putting in at the same time, they'll shut down threads. So there's lots of things goes, you know, that goes on in social media to try and make it good for everyone. But again, you know, there are situations where things are not perfect. Oh, okay. So you're saying the moderators of guinea pig care. I have care and advice. I haven't even been into that. I'm, I'm actually wondering if that's the group. Um, and, and this came up in our group because someone was in another group and I think it was that group. They were saying guinea pigs should eat potato and, and all the moderators were saying you can eat potato. And in fact, not long after that, there was a comment in there where a guinea pig died eating potato. But <clears throat> that's why I put out a video then. I thought, okay, let's just deal with that in a factual way. And there is a guinea pig. There is a guinea pig video on why you don't feed them potato, which is very factual. And, you know, you can, you can challenge any point in there, but that's the sort of video that you can share into a group like that. And people need to reconsider why they're saying what they're saying. It's very dangerous and uh, animals will die if they do that. Yeah. Oh dear. That's awful. So Gabby's Cavies says, uh, I'm still a newbie on guinea pig care. <laughs> okay. That's good. You're learning. It's fun to learn too. Awesome. Okay, so I hope I've touched on lots of aspects with housing today. Um, every situation is unique and different. So please be aware that there is no one right or one wrong because lifestyles of the people, the owners involved are very different and varied, but also the guinea pigs the number of them, the location of them, the place in the world they're in, the temperature where they're living, all these things are variables. So it's different for everyone. But you can always tell a happy guinea pig when you look at it and you see how comfortable, how loved it is, how calm it is, its coat is great. You can always tell when that's occurring. And uh, yeah, just be mindful of some of those things. Jay, sorry I'm late. Sounds like I missed a lot. You'll have to catch up. You <laughs> will. We're just on ending, Jay. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, actually, that's an interesting point. Um, Gabby, I thought it was funny, says, I wish my mother was on the same track as me. You know, a lot of people don't realize that sometimes in social media, they're talking with children or very young adults. And this also has implications for vet care because they may have acquired their guinea pig through being given the guinea pig, through um, buying it from a pet store without a lot of permission from the adults in the household. And when it comes down to wanting to do better for animals or them researching and coming across groups like what we have here on discussions like this, they, they then realize that their, their adults, their providers are not on the same page and they say no. So they're stuck and it's absolutely heartbreaking. Oh, stop that. 
<laughs> my birds play around. Oh, I'll have to do a video on them. So um, it's it's really difficult, particularly with vet care, because they'll often say, well, you know, I'm not allowed to take them to a vet, or they're living in the middle of, you know, two hours from a town, or mum and dad says we can't afford such and such. Like they they're within the restrictions of the parents and the household and that's heartbreaking really heartbreaking so we have to try and help where we can and try and educate as much as we can in that respect oh the third bot thanks Fitz <laughs> okay what do you do if they're chewing on coroplast I'll show you you go to your local bunning and uh, you get this I'll show it to you hold on Dun, 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 dun. I've got some around here somewhere. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Never find it where you want it. I thought it was here. Just having a bit of a hunt for you. Hold on. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Hold on, I'll be right back. I'll find some. Then I can show you what to do. okay here we go all right so what do you do if your guinea pigs are chewing on the coroplast it's not healthy for them you get this okay go to bunnings go to a hardware store and look in the curtain area the window curtain area now quite often it's not black it's white and quite often it's more flexible than this this is one it's been out where we've been erecting the shed but um it just clips over the coroplast and they will not bite this that's all you do just line it in that okay quite often you'll find it's also in um particular areas that they're biting or nibbling it so you can then you know you can um put that in that area rather than the whole cage so yeah okay Yeah, um, it, it's interesting too. The coroplast is not a food. <laughs> it's not a food, but um, because of the way guinea pigs actually eat, they really do break it down to virtually nothing. So I've never in the history of guinea pigs ever had a guinea pig reported as dying from coroplast. <laughs> so, you know, it's not, if you think about the hard, firm things that they do eat, it, it's not a food source. And I'm stressing it's not a food source. So, you know, getting some protector like that is great, but it, you know, it's not going to, it, it won't kill them either. So, yeah, just um, go to your Bunnings, go to a hardware store and find, you'll find it in the curtain window area where they hold glass. It's the, and they're often in strands that are about three metres long, long, as long as your car. And uh, those strands you can then cut up into the sizes that you want and clip it onto your core flute. Take a little bit of your core flute and uh, you can actually find the right one for you. It's very easy to do. Yeah, never have electric cords near your cage. They nibble. Yeah, they do. They do. But um, again, interestingly, never in the history of my time in rescue have I heard of an electrocuted guinea pig. So I think most people have you know dealt with that okay so yeah it's an interesting one but don't leave cables out with them yeah maybe no one's mentioned it i'm not sure i really hope i hope not yes quite right 
So Jay says, Chiropast is to piggies as styrofoam is to chickens. For some mysterious reason, they love it. I know. And they also excrete it and deal with it. So it doesn't, it doesn't hurt them. It doesn't hurt them. They do okay with it, but it's not a food source. It's not, not for food. So yeah, we, we don't recommend it in any way. Just get some of that curtain rod. It's curtain rod material. Or I think it's actually a glass lining material, but uh, you'll find it in the hardware areas. And look for the white ones as well. There's more white than there is black. So I thought it was funny. He says, they made my AC stop. They chewed it down to the bare wire. Youch. Okay. Well, thankfully they stopped at that. Um, I did see a discussion on it once and um, I don't think they get electrocuted because of grounding or I, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's something like that, but I've, I've never heard of one being electrocuted. When we deal with wildlife, we do get um, possums and other animals like bats who are electrocuted on wires. So it does happen. But in houses, I've never actually heard of a guinea pig that was electrocuted. So, yeah, that's, that's one I've never come across in rescue. But, again, if you've got wires, making sure that they're not where guinea pigs can, you know, nibble on them is the right thing to do. Yeah. Animals will chew all sorts of things. <laughs> they do. Absolutely. Yeah. And they try it. You know, these, these animals get bored. They need interaction. They need stimulation. And if they don't have it, they're going to test different things to see if it's food or not. They will. Nibble, nibble. Is that food? Is it not? They'll work it out. Yeah. Awesome. So we have been here over an hour, everyone. Thank you for joining me. And this is our weekly chat. I look forward to seeing you again next Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. And if you have any questions, just jot them down. If you're looking at this later, jot them down in the chat below because I do look at your comments and I do answer them. So, yeah, please do that. Um, if you would like to um, share this to groups, to friends, that would be fantastic because it will help this information be found. And likewise, if you click on like, that will also help the information to be found. Hopefully everyone's found it useful. Take care and have a great day wherever you are in the world. It's good to see you and I will be back again with you very soon. Take care. Bye for now.